So you're converting to traditional Catholicism or, you know, someone you want to try to convert to traditional Catholicism. Um, so I thought I'd make this short video. Hopefully I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes uh, for some practical advice on what to do. Now, to anyone who's so converting someone from a Protestant background or directly Catholic tradition can be quite difficult, even if they have strong Catholic tendencies, like even I did. I believe in real presence comparatively early on. I rejected sola fide at the age of 11. But especially people from race and a Protestant background, there's this huge wall between Catholics over there, we're over here. And to make that decision is a huge abandonment of one's past culture, past identity, in, in many ways. There are a lot of, especially with traditional Catholicism, there are a lot of things that you're going to have, that you're going to, have to give up if you convert. So, for example... Um, when my grandmother, Baptist grandmother, died, I was asked to sing at her Baptist funeral, and because prayer and calm of non-traditional Catholics is a mortal sin, as per mortalum animos, I had to say no, and that was extremely difficult to try telling your crying mother that. It's not easy. Uh, it's very painful. It's the right decision. And really, not unless you're a convert, you really don't get why you do that, or why you take that approach, and why it needs to be done. Which adds, makes it even more painful. So there are a lot of personal sacrifices, a lot of changes in how you worship. It's not sing a bunch of charismatic hymns and Christian rock in a sermon. Um, it's a lot of Gregorian chant, which is lovely and beautiful, but it is a change. It is a change in how you worship. Even though, look, the Latin Mass is a great evangelizing thing, but it does take getting used to as time goes on. So... So for a bit of practical advice, to anyone who's looking at uh, converting to traditional Catholicism, going to traditional Latin Mass for the first time, uh, give yourself a little bit, make a plan, plan a month or two in advance to get their nerves nerves up. Ask. So for me, when I converted, I said, I don't want to go to next traditional Latin Mass that's available. I want to go to the one, two months now, just to get the nerve up, because it's going to take me time to get the nerve up. And I knew that. Uh, it was a similar thing. Even after I full 100%, I said, yeah, I'm going to become a Catholic. It was like 10, 12 weeks before, uh, just uh, cha changing things up. I had to give up a lot of previous taboos and practices before I was keeping coach. I knew I had to give that up. Um, and even to get the nerve to set foot inside of a Catholic church, it was like a, it was just a place you don't go. It's like going, it's like, a, it was almost like a forbidden zone. Uh, even Novo Sordo. So it, and it took me a, a bit of getting used to going to, to the mass regularly and everything. Also, if you live at a great distance from a traditional Latin Mass, contact the SSPX or whoever you're in touch with. There might be people driving by you. It's not common for traditional Catholics to go hours and hours out of their way. And I received a lot of help in that regard. Now, if you attend a traditional Latin Mass the first time, uh, and I will, and to people who say the traditional Latin Mass is totally alien, people won't get used to it. Even the uh, even even the new Mass is still quite a culture shock. Anyway. <laughs> to uh, Protestants coming in. So, like, I didn't know what what's an offertory, what's a processional and recessional hymn. Um, why are you reading from a booklet that has set readings and how the Bible all chopped up, rather than just opening up a Bible turning to the proper passage? Uh, things like that. It's a culture shock. Now, if you go to a traditional Latin Mass for the first time, you don't understand what's going on, it's okay. One of the ways you can attend a traditional Latin Mass is to simply pray quietly with your own intentions and unite yourself in your heart to what's going on. If you are not baptized, if you're not a, if you're not a Catholic of any sort yet, um, it's so uh, do not receive Holy Communion. That's one. That's the one thing. Just stay in your place at communion at communion time and make an act of spiritual communion to invite Jesus into your heart. In the Novus Ordo, they they tend to uh, ask Catechumens or other such people to cross hands like this other heads and get a blessing from the priest going up. That's not the custom among, among uh, the traditional Latin mass. It is simply to uh, go and kneel down. Go 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 and uh, kneel kneel down when you are make an act of spiritual communion, asking Jesus in your heart. Another thing you can also do is get a traditional Latin mass missile. Now, some missions might be able to give you used ones. Uh, you can also look for them at used bookstores. In many cases, it has. Uh, Matt, Matt, it has the uh, English, it has the text of the Mass, English on one side, Latin on the other. So let me see if I can just open up for you. And I will actually explain to you how to use it. Now, 
So as you can see here, you have mass of the catechumens, that's where you start, mass of the faithful, and that's known as the ordinary. And even if you just can't follow the readings, even if you just follow along with that, that will, that will help you follow along with most of what's being said at mass. As you, uh, as time goes on, there will be two other places that gives the masses for all the sunnies and major feast days throughout the year. In another place, uh, usually, in a traditional Latin mass missile, <coughs> there will be uh, another place that has the masses for the different days on the different days of the week throughout the year um it takes a bit of getting used to uh, my honest personal advice would be to just for the first little bit follow along with the ordinary and at home try to pray the mass of each each day as you go along with a missile and as i do i call it dry mass is what i would is what i call it and it helps you get used to like especially when you live in mission territory like most traditional catholics let's be honest uh it helps you get used to it um, far more quickly. Another thing for another thing is that uh, conversion ceremony is that conversions usually even among traditional Catholics take a bit of probation period and training. Now I have seen people who converted like day of <laughs> the minute they asked for a priest and there was no probation period. It's more common to ask for a bit of a uh, a bit of bit more catechesis first. And that's quite normal. E same with the RCAA. It's about a year. I actually rec personally recommend a catechumenate of uh, two, three, three, two, three year years in general. That's my personal recommendation. That is not to discourage you. That is because it simply takes a while to get used to being a Catholic, thinking like a Catholic, praying like a Catholic. I would also another thing that I another thing that I had to get used to. One of the first things I asked when I started. Out, asked myself when I was going to become a Catholic was not how to pray the rosary, but what on earth was a rosary. I knew there was this thing with beads. Uh, again, you can simply look it up online. It's quite it's quite easy to learn how to pray. Uh, the one difference is that when you see something called the Luminous Mysteries, for traditional Catholics, don't use it. Also, there are a lot of apologetic websites online. Again, I'm hoping to make some apologetic content on this channel in the next little bit. Hopefully, this is the site I can recommend people to, to look things up uh, on this channel. That being said, uh, the Fatima Center is a great YouTube channel. Uh, John Sal's Apologetics. I have to admit, it's not as user-friendly as it was a few years ago, but you can still use it. And Catholic Apologetics Info on Our Lady of the Rosary Library are some great channels. I will try to remember to po post some of the links down below. Feel free to comment and yell at me to put them in the description if I forget. And I would and read on your own time. Like that is where you're going to learn most about the traditional Catholic faith. Now to anyone trying to convert someone, bring some over from Protestant background, invite them to Mass, but expect them to say no. Expect them to say the no the first 10, 20 times at least. Which is why you need to keep asking them. They will if someone like uh, I've invited people like 10, 20 times, eventually they come over and convert. And that's people who are comparatively open. I wasn't open. It still wears them down, and most of the conversions are going to be, well, how it's going to happen is facts and information, you being open about your faith, praying the rosary, speaking especially about Our Lady and the Blessed Virgin. I got some experiences where people would play uh, tapes of prayers of the Hail Mary, and have you ever seen um, the Bells of St. Mary's the movie where the, it's a classic movie, and the nuns are praying the O Sanctissima for the, this big, um, uh, real estate agent to give them this big building he's given for their new school as a donation and he's seeing like visions of children playing in his office as he's doing it and he's like i want to go home <laughs> that's very much how it was for me so keep on praying for them and being open about your faith about being traditional catholic and be explicit about what that means and how it's different that there is a different difference because there is um Keep in touch with them. Be patient with them. Constantly pray for them for years and years and years. If a person is open, my a personal take is that it'll probably take like a five to ten years before they even make the decision to yes become a Catholic, and then they start the catechumen. <laughs> it's a long journey. Um, so best get started right away is my advice to anyone trying to convert their non-Catholic relatives or friends or whatever. But it is doable. And it's good to, and the bit, one of the biggest pieces of advice I would give to any traditional Catholics who want to convert their family and friends is know your faith. Know in detail 
be an expert apologist, study it your, yourself. Like, there is no excuse in the, in the internet age. Not anymore. And that's my final piece of advice. Anyway, this is officially over 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to keep, I was trying to keep it under. It looks like I failed. But anyway, that's a piece of personal advice. So anyway, just want to say a few, three, let's finish off with three Homeries. And again, I recommend anyone looking to Catholic tradition, look up the Society of St. Pius X website or any other traditional Catholic groups in your area, even if they're a long way away. You'd be surprised at how traditional Catholic missions cover vast territories. So they could probably put you in touch with someone, even your area, or at least, I might even be able to come to you. Who knows? It's my advice. So let's finish off with some three Hail Marys for the SSPX Apostolate, for Catholic faithful tradition everywhere, and for people who are concerned conversion, those who are Protestant, non-traditional Catholic, for them to convert. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedictum libros, ad benedictus fructus mortis tui Jesus, sanctum ia materia of nobis peccatoribus nucum mortis nostri, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedictum libros, ad benedictus fructus mortis tui Jesus, sanctum ia materia of nobis peccatoribus nucum mortis nostri, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum, benedictum libros, ad benedictus fructus mortis tui Jesus, sanctum ia materia of nobis peccatoribus nucum mortis nostri, amen. Nomini Patris, et Filii Spiritus Sancti, amen.